thank you, choir. So because today is also the day of our annual congregational meeting, I'd like to extend our worship by saying, our, our welcome by saying, welcome to the worship of Christ here at Hatfield Congregational Church. Whether you're younger or older, whether you're gay or straight, whether you're single or partnered, whether you are a believer or a doubter, this is God's house, and all of you are most certainly welcome here. So, like I said, um, not feeling the best today, and I think part of the problem was last Sunday it was 70 degrees. I went out and I washed my car, it got cold, and I think I did this to myself. But um, for those of you who were, who were here last Sunday, I do have my, if you see this, get me a cup of tea socks on. So, uh, Sharon, you got some work this afternoon. You got to take care of me. You got to take care of me. You got to take care of me. Boy, she's a... She's just ignoring me. <clears throat> so, so if anybody wants to come over to my house today, so we're going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, <clears throat> so we're going to move to our call to worship. So have we understood, <clears throat> excuse me, have we understood Jesus' plans for us? Have we listened to the good news of deliverance and purpose? Listen, all who are near and all who are far away. Jesus calls to us as his brothers and sisters. Let us be ready to hear. Jesus calls us to be the saints. We do not usually think of ourselves in this way, but what matters is Jesus does. Let us not be hesitant to serve Jesus with our whole being, nor is this the call to embrace our identity as the saints of God. Praise be to God. Amen. Let us now come together in our unison prayer. Jesus, we wait for you to hear our prayers and petitions. We come with weights of desperate situations and moments of despair. We come also with gratitude and awe. When you call us together as church, we are consoled and challenged. We find our comfort when needed, and in turn we are able to comfort others. We ask to be renewed with your spirit so that we may be your saints. There is so much to do as church. It can be overwhelming unless we turn to you in prayer and ask for guidance, grace, and strength. Come to us now with your saving help so that we may be your church. Amen. All right, let us now raise our voices in song. Red hymnal number 327, Savior like a shepherd lead us.
So it's that special time in the service where we get to share with one another the gift of peace. My gift to you is I'm going to stay right here. <laughs> Kiddos, if you want to come up, I'll stay away from you. I promise I'll be over here. <clears throat> Unless neither one of you gave me this, did you? You weren't sick last week, were you? Okay, good. All right, I'm going to stay over here. So, any of you guys baseball fans? Are you? Do you like baseball? Do you a little bit? Do you guys like the Red Sox? Do you? Me too. That's my team. So like right now, even in, in uh, football season, I'm kind of just counting down to when baseball starts. So <clears throat> baseball is, uh, the Red Sox are my team, and do you know what happened to the Red Sox this past week? Did you hear any of the news? No, they had the, something about their manager, Alex Cora. He got caught cheating, and so they had to let him go. They mutually parted ways. So Alex Cora is no longer the manager of the Red Sox because of something that happened when he was with the Astros and maybe did with the Red Sox. And so, <clears throat> because he's a really good manager, he was a really good player, but because he cheated, all that stuff is gonna be thrown away. You're gonna be in Sunday school, but we're gonna hear a message from, uh, from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians that we're all supposed to be, and we're all called to be saints. And sometimes when we think of saints, we think of really special, holy people, like they have this glowing disc around their heads but saints are all of us. We're all called to be saints. And it doesn't mean you're going to be perfect, but it does mean that we're supposed to try to be better. And so sometimes when you hear stuff like people who are really talented and they want to do a little bit extra by cheating to be even better, be more competitive, they kind of throw the baby away. They throw the baby away with the bathwater because they're trying to be better, but they're doing it the wrong way. They're cheating. We're called to be really good people. We're called to be saints. And to do that, the best way to do it is to try to be like Jesus. And so that's why you go to church. That's why you go to Sunday school. That's why you maybe read the Bible. That's why we have these children times. So that you can kind of understand what Jesus is all about. And you want to try to be like Jesus because that's what being a saint is. Just trying to be better like Jesus was good. Okay? All right, you have any questions? You're worried about me, though, my, my, my voice, right? No. <laughs> All right, hit the road. <clears throat> yeah, nice try.
beautiful. Thank you. Nice message, too. <clears throat> it's now time for our joys, our celebrations, and our concerns. Tomorrow is Martin Luther King Day. As you all know, it's our three-day weekend. As we remember to honor his life and ministry, we also remember that he worked to end prejudice in our country. And he lived for it, and he not only lived for it, he also died because of that. And so what we'd like to try to do is we remember him. We also want to remember that we are called to do the same thing as church. Um, I take a great deal of pride in the fact that Martin Luther King was Reverend Martin Luther King, and he did that as a church leader, uh, trying to bring the message of the church out into our country. And so uh, hopefully we can do the same thing through social and justice ministries of our denomination. Also, let's have prayers for our annual congregational meeting, which will be taking place immediately after the service today. Um, that we may be guided to serve as church in the community and really throughout the world because a lot of the things that we do reach beyond Hatfield and reach out into the rest of the, uh, the world. And so let us hope that what we do as church at that annual meeting may be according to God's will. Also, today is the Sunday within the week of prayer for Christian unity. The two main themes this year are universe, or unusual kindness and that is the story that uh, Paul was shipwrecked on the island of Malta and these strangers are shipwrecked and all of a sudden the people of Malta just showed them unusual kindness. And the World Council of Churches looking at the world today said we need to hear that message again, this willingness to be, uh, share unusual kindness. And so today and this Sunday within the week of prayer for Christian unity, please let us keep in mind that we are called to show unusual kindness. The other one is something that the uh, UCC has right in our very masthead that they may all be one, which is Jesus' prayer from John's Gospel that um, even if you are not part of the UCC, that all Christians, that they all may be one. Also, we continue to offer prayers for David Bell, whose funeral was yesterday here in the sanctuary. May he rest in peace, and may his family, friends, and also this congregation here find consolation and hope in our shared faith that he continues to live now in the glories of heaven. A private intention is offered for health and well-being and recovery for one of our own. Also prayers for Ed McCarthy, uh, who's not here today because we have an annual congregational meeting. And so make sure you tell Ed that we, we were thinking about him anyway. Prayers for my friend Doug Bilecki. Prayers for Glenn and Denise Wagner. Prayers for Miro Kilbovich. Prayers for Lynn Omasta. And are there any other joys, celebrations, concerns, anything you'd like to share with the church? Yes. Beautiful. Thank you. Lots of food. Okay. Anything else, anyone? All right, then let's just kind of be quiet for a moment, turn inward, say the things to Jesus we want to say in private, and listen. God of peace, whose love has graced this planet in the person of Jesus of Nazareth and baptized us with the presence and power of the Holy Spirit, reawaken our eagerness to go where you would have us be so that we may fulfill our calling of discipleship. Help us as church to be your voice and your hands in this our world and to help lead others to experience your enduring compassion and your enlightenment. Inspire us to find joy and meaning in doing this, your will, throughout the year. May this sacred hour, taken out of the week, as special. May this time of worship and prayer guide and strengthen us to be your followers and also to be your church. So let us come together now in sharing the words of prayer that Jesus gave to his disciples 2,000 years ago, and that we still share now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
Remembering all that we have spent on the necessities and luxuries of this world, we now pause and consider how to bring offerings worthy of Jesus' eternal promises. Nothing we give can compare to Jesus' selfless and inexhaustible generosity, but we can respond with trust that whatever we do offer, whether of purse or of person, will be used by God to further his work in our world. So may we be as generous as our faith expects and as our situation in life allows. O Lord, these offerings now to be placed in your sanctuary as a symbol of our love for you and for all others. Today we will hear the story of John the Baptist proclaiming that Jesus is the Son of God and also the Lamb of God. And then two disciples have to choose who they are going to follow. And because John points out Jesus, they leave everything else behind and follow the unknown. Let us as church be that voice pointing to Jesus so that others have the chance and the opportunity and the blessing to follow after Jesus as we do. May these gifts help us in that ministry. And we thank all for their generosity. And we pray that God use these to his work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> so now we're going to sing again. And this time it is from the Blue Hymnal, number 453, called As Partners.
Okay, that's better. Our first reading today is from uh, Corinthians 1, chapter 1, 1 through 9. Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the, by the will of God and our brother Sos, Sosthenes. To the church of God that is Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Jesus Christ, called to be saints together with all of those who in every place call the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from our God, our Father, and Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God, always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For every way that you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful and by him you are called into fellowship by his son Jesus Christ our Lord. morning's gospel reading is from the book of John, uh, first chapter starting at the 29th verse. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, after me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher. Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which translated Peter. Thank you, Jeff, for reading and, and saving my voice a little bit extra. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. So what I plan to do today is I'm going to put this uh, full sermon on our website this afternoon and, and you can read that and I'm just going to kind of give you some highlights. Um, so we're going to be out of church a little bit quicker and so I don't want any prayers now that we hope Randy gets sick all the time so we're no more sermons here. But anyway, let me tell you my little story. You may have seen this in the newspaper as well. 
there's a family, they're up in Maine, and they're skiing. And so they're, they want to get, in, at the end of the day, they're tired after coming down the slopes, you know, all that working and stuff. And so they want to get back to their lodges as quickly as they possibly can. They're not familiar with Maine. So just like all of us, they go to the GPS, and probably just like all of us, they hit the button saying, quickest route possible. So it has to be the father. It's always got to be the father. I wish it was somebody else, but it's the father. They're driving, following the GPS from the slopes, trying to get back to their lodging. And the GPS, quickest route possible, if you've all done this the same thing, sometimes it takes you down some of these weird back streets and back roads. You don't know where you're going, but the GPS seems to. You trust the GPS. So the guy gets to a logging road up in Maine in the winter. There's signs at the beginning of the logging road. And this, is, this was in the paper. This really happened. There's signs. The whole family is reading the signs that say this is not passable in the winter. It is closed in the winter. The father looks at the road. He sees the ruts. He's got his, you know, he's a skier. He's got probably one of these big SUVs. I can go through that, no problem. Everybody else is in the car saying, you know, maybe we should think about it. But he's already committed himself to that quickest route possible in the GPS. So if he does not go down this road, that means he's got to backtrack who knows how far to get onto another route where the GPS will recalculate and get him back to that hot tub at the lodge. So he decides to go forward. He disregards the sign. He follows the GPS. You all know what happens. He gets stuck out in the main woods in the middle of winter. Eventually, somehow, I don't know, OnStar, cell phones or whatever, they are able to contact somebody. Somebody comes and pulls them out. Uh, but it was a long time before they got to their lodge. The whole purpose of that story is you got to make choices on the routes that you're going to follow. GPS is saying take this logging road. The, the signs at the beginning of the logging road are saying don't take this logging road. We got to make our choice what we're going to follow. And so today, John the Baptist, we've heard of last week we heard one baptism story. Today we're hearing another baptism story. And if my voice is good enough in tomorrow Bible class, we're going to talk about the differences and the fact that even something as what we think is as common and knowable as the baptism of Jesus is not all that common and knowable. So John never actually baptizes Jesus. John just can't go there. He can't allow John the Baptist to baptize Jesus, especially a baptism of repentance like the other ones are talking about. So instead, Jesus is walking by and the Baptist says, there is the Lamb of God. There is the Son of God. I saw the Spirit descend upon him. So he says that one day, people are listening, but they stay with John the Baptist. Day two, Jesus is walking by. John says, there is the Lamb of God. There is the Son of God. Two disciples peel away from John and start following at a distance behind Jesus. Jesus kind of senses their presence back there. He turns around. What are you looking for? That's the question of faith. What are you looking for? So it starts off as simple enough, and so they stay for dinner. And I don't know how closely you're listening to Jeff's telling of that gospel story, but it does mention that Andrew, Cephas's Peter's brother, is one disciple. The other disciple is not mentioned, ever. And that's not because John doesn't know who he is. It's not because John forgot who he was. It happens throughout John's gospel. That unknown disciple, that's us. John works us into his story. John is not telling a history of what happened to Jesus and the disciples. Every time you get that anonymous, unnamed, beloved disciple, it's us. We're in that story. And so we're the ones who go off and we follow after Jesus. We, we follow the direction of John. There is the Son of God. There is the Lamb of God. I saw the Spirit descend upon him. We're the ones who pull away. We decide to follow another route and we go with Jesus. So that question is also to us, what are you looking for? What are we looking for in our faith? Is it just consolation? Is it just that hope that, you know, when things are bad, we can say a prayer and maybe it'll go away? Is the hope that maybe when we die, we can go to heaven? Or is there something deeper, maybe about how we live, that is also what are we looking for? Today is the Sunday within the octave of Christian unity. I think it's a very profound statement that the World Council of Churches which is the Orthodox, the Catholic, the Protestants, all these different churches coming together in this, this league. And this year they decided, out of all the Bible stories, they went to the Acts of the Apostles. Paul has been captured. Um, he's ticked off an awful lot of people. Uh, he's a prisoner. 
and he is being shipped because he also has Roman citizenship. He has uh, claimed, I have the right to hear, have my trial heard in Rome. And so they are shipping him from Jerusalem to Rome. And on the way to Rome, the ship is in a storm, it's shipwrecked, they're thrown on the shores of Malta. And as I mentioned earlier, these strangers are thrown on the shores of Malta and the inhabitants of that island showed them unusual kindness. The World Council of Churches chose that as the theme for this year. They are looking at the world and that unusual kindness is the fact that kindness is unusual in our world. We are mean-spirited right now in our world. We just don't have a lot of compassion anymore. And so this World Council of Churches, not a few people gathered in Hatfield, not the UCC with its million some odd people, not all of Western you know, uh, Christians here, but the whole World Council of Churches looked at the world, the news, and said, we need to show unusual kindness. We have to get that message out there. So we have that same choice right now. We are the unnamed disciple. Do we follow this, uh, what are you looking for? Or do we just go along the way of the world? You know, sometimes the way of the world gets so bad that I have to stop watching the news. I, I, I just, I don't know if they call me a snowflake or whatever, but I just can't take it anymore. There are so many bad things that I have to have a reprieve. I have to, I have to take a vacation from the news because it's just so mean-spirited. And so you have to pull back. So there are warning signs out there that the way of the world is not always the best way, but it's one that we are invested in. So just like that guy who came to that logging road, and if he decided to pull back and turn around, well, that would have you know, taken an awful lot of time to go back. Just like the two disciples with John the Baptist, they've invested in John. And remember, there's all these people around. Only two go off to follow Jesus. It takes a lot to decide to do something different. So we've got all of this that we're invested in as the world, in the church, Jesus, people of faith, our faith. We're asked right now, what are you looking for? You know, what do you want from church? What do you think church should do? And it's not only worship, because we're going to leave here, we're going to have a little break in the dining room, then we're going to go into that parlor, and we're going to decide what we want to do as church. We're going to ask people to come forward and to serve in this way or that way. We're going to plan our future as the church for 2020, the 350th anniversary of this, this institution that is Hatfield Congregational. What are we going to do as church? That's continuation of our worship. One of the things I'm going to talk about is what Amy read about. We are called to be the saints of God as I do my invocation at that meeting. We are called to be the saints of God. That's not only the special people. That's every one of us here. And so we have choices to make. You know, what are you looking for? And so if you want to hear more of it, it's going to be online. Um, that's all I've got for right now. But that is an extremely profound question. What are you looking for? And that's something we all need to ask individually. And that's something we all need to ask together as Hatfield Congregational Church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> So let us now <clears throat> turn to Blue Hymnal number 453, with all of this in mind and the annual meeting following, to sing Called as Partners.
so much nicer to sing that instead of uh, called his partners twice. <laughs> so good catch, everybody out there. I guess no, nobody's listening to what I say, though. I'm getting the impression. So that, <clears throat> that hymn was sung at my ordination um, 35 years ago by a children's choir. And what I liked is during the third vo verse, instead of, is it I, uh, we sang, it is I. Um, and I, I, that's a beautiful song. And uh, that whole idea about, you know, here I am, Lord. That's all we're asked to do as Christians. Give ourselves over to Jesus, and then hopefully Jesus will do with us as he pleases uh, for the good that we hope for in the world. So I'm not going to be going to the back. Um, you don't want to shake my hands. Um, hopefully a bunch of you will be going uh, this way. Um, even if you're not going to the meeting, you're also welcome to come out here uh, you know, and have a bite to eat with us. Uh, I think we're expecting more, uh, except maybe for the snow. We, we have so much. We thought there'd be a lot more people, so please. There's sandwiches and soups and chili, and please come back and eat. Uh, all right, there you go, Linda. Thank you. So there you go. So um, whoever you are, hopefully we'll all exit out this way and have a, a, a time to share together. So let's bring our, this part of our worship to a close with our benediction response. Like disciples of old, we have found the Messiah, God's anointed one. Let us follow wherever Christ will lead. Know that we can call on him at any time from anywhere. Christ is always available to us. Let us make him a constant part of our lives. Jesus is always present for us. We are never asked to serve alone. We are strengthened by our worship and by the community of this church. With God's grace, we are ready to be called to do God's work, to build up the holy and to challenge the unrighteous. So let us go forth to help create a better world and a better church for all people and really for all of God's good creation. <laughs>